nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And now for today's prophecy update. North Korea launched a satellite into orbit yesterday. The rocket required to achieve this feat is also capable of sending a nuclear weapon to the United States. Many people believe the satellite launch was simply a cover for testing North Korea's nuclear missile capabilities. In the meantime, Iran continues to refine its missile arsenal because of the close relationship that exists between Iran and North Korea. Many believe they are in reality working together to acquire weapons that could threaten the United States. Since the Bible prophesies a world war for the near future that will destroy one third of the world's population, this alliance between two enemies of the United States certainly bears watching. It appears quite certain that Iran, the United States, and North Korea will all be involved in the coming prophesied conflict. Well, we want to talk about it today because there's a lot of speculation going on that the launch of the satellite by North Korea was more than just that. Now, let's recap a few things that have happened recently. These are things that you need to know that you've probably overlooked because I did until I started reading these articles today. North Korea has conducted four nuclear tests, 2006, 2009, 2013, and then January 6th of this year of 2016. North Korea launched a satellite yesterday on February the 7th of 2016. And the missile for this launch is the same as would be needed to launch a nuclear attack against the U.S. Now, let's pause there just a moment. Don't forget, they've been testing nuclear weapons. It is acknowledged that North Korea is now a nuclear power. The latest nuclear weapon they tested, they claim was a hydrogen bomb. Even though the disturbance that was sent by this test didn't seem to come up to the level of a hydrogen bomb, you probably do understand that an atomic bomb like the one dropped on Hiroshima in World War II it is about one thousandth as powerful as a hydrogen bomb. That's right. A hydrogen bomb wallops one thousand times the power of Hiroshima. Now, Hiroshima killed around 200,000 people. Well, multiply that by a thousand, and you can see the incredible power of the hydrogen bomb. Now, North Korea claimed that was a hydrogen bomb. At this point, we don't know because there's no way to tell. Nevertheless, this bomb that was just tested could be used to launch an EMP attack. That's an electronic magnetic pulse attack against America's power grid. Now, this is really important because an electronic magnetic pulse bomb could disable all electronic devices in the entire United States. Now, I want to pause for a moment because perhaps many of you are not aware of the EMP, the electronic magnetic pulse bomb, but we are being warned about it repeatedly. The way it works is this. It's a nuclear bomb, and it usually, for the greatest effect, is ignited 300 miles high 
let's say, over the center of the United States of America. Now, what we're being told, and I'm not an expert, I have read a number of articles about it, but what we're being told is that that kind of a bomb will send electronic magnetic pulses down and will fry the circuitry of all of our electronics. I'm talking about all of our computers, all the computers that run our power plants, all of our computers that run our military equipment. Now, if that is in fact true, and it's been told us over and over and over again, then the possibility exists that these tests recently by North Korea could put within North Korea's power the ability to cripple the United States of America and send us back to the 18th century. Now, think about life with no electric lights, no washer, no dryer, no electricity at all. Your car won't run. It's nuclear circuits. We're all melted. It's nothing but a piece of junk now. So how will we negotiate life back when we all lived on farms? Well, not so bad. Today, we all live on cities. Now, if you go to the store, now all the foodstuffs in the freezers are spoiling very rapidly. The canned go goods are being bought up at panic paces. The cash registers won't function because they're electronic. So they may not sell you anything at all. Now, I'm not trying to be an over alarmist. We have plenty of that in our world today. But I am talking to you about what's being talked about today as a result of the nuclear test conducted by Korea. Now, let me give you some more facts. Between the nuclear test of January the 6th and the missile test of February the 7th, it is possible that North Korea now has the ability to launch an EMP attack. Now, this ability is at the fingertips of Kim Jong-un, the relatively new leader of North Korea that no one really knows for sure. But he certainly views the United States as enemy number one from North Korea. Iran loves to chant death, to the United States, death to Israel. The United States and Iran and North Korea have a very special relationship. As a matter of fact, it is believed that the head of North Korea's, uh, the head of Iran's nuclear capability was on site recently when North Korea tested its latest nuclear weapon. It also is being told that Iran actually has offices in North Korea that they've been working together. Now, remember, we just signed a deal with Iran stating that she would not purify uranium to the point that it could be used for a nuclear weapon. Iran had to dismantle certain of its nuclear sites. Well, that's now been examined by the International Atomic Energy Agency from the United Nations, the IAEA, and they say some of their places are empty. Where did all the stuff go? Well, maybe North Korea? Could it be that in the process of all this negotiation that Iran and North Korea made a deal? Bring your know-how and your centrifuges to North Korea and we'll make plenty of nuclear bombs for both of us. In the meantime, we both can pursue missiles that will deliver nuclear weaponry around the world. Now, in October and November of 2015, Iran tested missiles capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. There was a lot of objections in the international community over this. But the fact is, the deal that was negotiated by John Kerry and Barack Obama didn't prohibit Iran from testing missiles. 
and Iran, when they were uh, objected to, said, look, we didn't have any nuclear missiles, no nuclear warheads in these missiles. We're just maintaining our military equipment. So Iran is testing ever more far-reaching missiles, as is Korea, and they are very closely allied together. Now, since Iran and North Korea are such close allies, could it be that these recent tests are actually being coordinated in order to bring both countries to full nuclear capability? It's a bone-chilling thought. But let me remind you that the Bible prophesies a war is coming that is going to kill one-third of mankind. You can open your Bible right this moment and read it. It's Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 through 16. It says there that a war will emanate from the Euphrates River. Where is Iran? Part of Iran's border is the Euphrates River. It's the area where ISIS is fighting where 65 nations in coalition led by the United States are fighting against ISIS. Russia is fighting against ISIS. The military focus of the world is on the Euphrates River today, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I, I want to make sure that I don't attempt to be melodramatic here. But it's hard to overdo the drama when you're looking at a prophecy that says one third of the world's population is going to be wiped off by a coming war. And this war will come from the Euphrates River area. There are four nations that house the Euphrates, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran. And ISIS has captured about 40% of the Euphrates over the last two years. So we're engaged in this battle right now. Now let's throw something else into the mix. Both ISIS and Iran hold an apocalyptic view of the times in which we live right now. ISIS believes they're on the brink of fighting the last war that will bring their Mahdi back to this earth. They teach that the West is going to come against them at a little city called Dabiq, which is about five or ten miles outside of Aleppo. And by the way, Aleppo is where all the fighting is taking place right now. There's a huge battle raging. Russia is bombing Aleppo right now without mercy. Aleppo was the largest Syrian city before all of this conflict began five years ago. Now this little town outside of Aleppo is called Dabiq. Muhammad prophesied, and it's recorded in the Muslim holy book called the Hadith. They have two holy books, the Quran and the Hadith. It's recorded in the Hadith that the final war would happen when the Christian West would come against Islam at Dabiq. Believing this so completely, ISIS, back in the summer of 2014, made their way up to the beacon, captured it. They spent a lot of manpower, spilled a lot of blood because they felt like we are setting the stage for the final war. Because the prophecy said at the beak is where the Mahdi will come, which is the, their name for the Messiah. He would come and fight for them. They also teach that Jesus will also come and will break a cross in front of the whole world and say the story of the cross was a made-up story. It didn't happen. It's not true. And therefore, you should all convert to Islam. Now, that's what they believe. And when they captured Dabiq, one of the first things they did was to behead an American journalist and then sent the DVD all over the world because they were trying to provoke the United States into attacking them there because they believed when that happened, 
that that was going to result in the final battle that would usher in a one world government under the total control of Islam. Well, we didn't go there to fight against them and we haven't to this point. We have stayed from the air. We have not sent in our ground troops at this time to fight. Now to show you how much ISIS believes in this final battle called Dabiq, they call their recruiting magazine, which they send electronically around the world to get young Muslims to join the battle. Their magazine is called the Dabiq magazine. And they're continually month after month after month sending out this message that the final battle is now in progress. Now that's ISIS. ISIS represents Sunni Muslims, which is about 85% of the Muslims of the world. Iran represents Shia Muslims, which is about 15% of the Muslims of the world. And that's not an insignificant number because 15% of 1.6 billion still gets you up there in the neighborhood of 250 million, which is just slightly less than the population of the United States of America. So here Iran is. A modern state, it's not ISIS. ISIS is still a very primitive terrorist organization with money. But Iran is an advanced society. We just now are releasing $150 billion for them to use in the advancement of their missile technology. And if Korea needs the money, they've got the money to advance the uh, enrichment of uranium if in fact North Korea and Iran are working together. Well, Iran looks at prophecy a little bit different, but they do believe their Mahdi is coming and they believe a great war is going to precede the coming of the Mahdi and that they should prepare for this great war. Now, if Iran in fact is working with North Korea right now to produce an electronic, an electric magnetic pulse bomb, which could paralyze the United States and send us back into the 18th century. If they're really doing that, and I want to be careful, I don't know that they are, but I do know that they tested, they've tested four nuclear weapons, and the latest one was their most powerful. And then a month later, they're testing now this rocket that can blast a satellite into space. Now, I've read that that satellite could contain a nuclear weapon, and that satellite is circling. The satellites that are launched by North Korea circle from north to south. Many satellites circle the other way, from east to west. Since it circles north to south, one hour after the Super Bowl was over, the new North Korean satellite went over the site of the Super Bowl. Now, if in fact, and please do not say that I said that satellite has a nuclear weapon in it. I don't know. I simply read an article posing that possibility stating that they, they could put a nuclear bomb on that satellite and then whenever they give the signal, detonate the nuclear weapon 300 miles above the earth and it would set off this electronic magnetic pulse weapon. Okay, now I don't want to be unduly alarmist here, but I also don't want to fail you by saying that it couldn't happen. It could happen. I certainly pray to God that it does not happen. I do not know how far advanced the preparations are to save our electric grid. Now, I mean, at its present stage, the way I understand, our entire electric grid is exposed. We have three electric grids in the United States of America. One is the Texas grid. It's by itself. Another one is Northeast and Canada. The other one is the rest of the United States of America. If all three of those grids go down, America 
would be left without electricity. Are any of those grids protected against electronic magnetic pulse now? According to my reading, no. So let's just say that these recent tests by this man by the name of Jung Kim Il, King Kim Jung Il, King, well, these uh, Asian names are a little difficult. Kim Jong Un, that's the name of the Korean leader, the North Korean leader. Let's say that he really has the temperament to unleash such a weapon. Let's say that Iran could do it. I mean, Iran loves to chant. First of all, we're going to destroy the little Satan, Israel. Then we're going to destroy the big Satan, United States of America. I mean, they've openly chanted it. They're leaders. So if, in fact, they have a device today, let's just assume they do have, where does that place the United States of America? Now, we know what the prophecies say about the future of the United States. The United States is going to be a protector of Israel in the end times. Does that mean then that there will not be an electronic magnetic pulse attack against the U.S.? Not necessarily. How long would it take us to recover? I can't tell you that. Some people say 10 years. Can you imagine the United States of America being with all electricity for the next 10 years? It would be a revolution to say the least. I don't expect it to happen. Could it happen on a diminished scale? Could part of America be devastated? Well, I don't know. Now, let's see if we can pull this together here. What's my first defense? Well, our first defense is to be right with God. Because when this hits, there could be widespread riots and devastation. You might not live through it. I might not live through it. So our first thing when we consider end time events is the admonition of Jesus Christ. Be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, your Lord does come. Let's just say that these last two tests by Korea were preparatory for an electronic magnetic pulse attack against the United States of America. Let's say that it would happen in the next six months. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this does not happen. I don't even think it's going to happen, but I don't know for sure. All I'm telling you is these are the reports. I mean, the UN Security Council met yesterday at the United Nations on Super Bowl Sunday. They were so alarmed by this latest news out of North Korea. Our ambassador to the United Nations was there yesterday meeting, an emergency meeting over this launch by North Korea of this satellite and the use of this missile because international law has outlawed the testing of these missiles. Any missile capable of delivering a nuclear warhead has now been outlawed. So they're saying to North Korea, you are violating international law. And there are discussions right now to place economic sanctions against North Korea to stop her from going any farther. There are appeals to China. Candidate Donald Trump says, we've got to put pressure on China. China is the only one with the leverage that can control North Korea, short of total war. So these things are all brewing while I'm sitting here at this desk today talking to you. So where is safety? Is it in who we elect? No, that may be important, but there's no safety there. Our only safety is in the Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you have eternal life right now? Do you have the assurance that you will live forever? You can have. Jesus said, except a person is born again, 
he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You need to be biblically born again. The Bible says when you're born again, you're a new creature. And when you're filled with God's spirit, that's your insurance that when Jesus comes, your body will be changed from mortal to immortal and you're going to be caught up to meet him in the air and you will forever then be with him. You will be changed into an immortal body. It comes through being born again. Now, I know the term born again has been overused. Everybody's been born again. But when you ask them, how do you know? When did it happen? What do you understand being born again is? Well, I've written a brochure called What Do You Mean? Born Again. Now, please, don't take this lightly. Because the day's coming when you're going to die. So am I. Everybody's going to die. And whether you're born again or not is going to be the main thing. It's not going to be whether your will is in order. It doesn't matter whether you're going to have $100,000 in the bank or nothing in the bank. The main thing will be, were you biblically born again? And were you living a life in harmony with Jesus Christ? That's going to mean everything. It'll mean whether you are eternally saved or eternally damned. The brochure I've written, What Do You Mean Born Again?, is free. As a matter of fact, you can have it in the next 15 seconds. Simply go to endtime.com. That's E-N-D-T-I-M-E dot com. And about halfway down, you'll see the article, What Do You Mean Born Again? Sir, Madam, read it carefully. If you've not obeyed what's in that brochure, you're not ready. But we want you to be ready. If you need help, if you don't quite understand, call us. The number to call, 1-800-END-TIME, 1-800-363-8463. Stay with us. I'll be back in a moment. This trip was a special experience for me. My study of the Bible has been enhanced after seeing Israel. The guides and planners for this trip did an excellent job of taking care of us. The hotels and furnished meals were top-notch. This is a trip of a lifetime. Sign up and go. Bert from Arizona. Come with us as we walk in the footsteps of Jesus and learn about the end time story on our Israel Holy Roman Empire tour. The Bible prophesies that the Antichrist and false prophet will come out of the Holy Roman Empire. We will be touring the capital of the European Union in Brussels, Belgium, where the rebirthed Holy Roman Empire was fulfilled. We will also visit the Charlemagne Cathedral in Aachen, Germany, who was the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. We will be touring the Hall of the Caesars in Frankfurt, Germany, and much more. When we get to Israel, we will see the Mount of Olives, the Garden Tomb, the Temple Institute, Bethlehem, the Western Wall, the Sea of Galilee, the Mount of the Beatitudes, and more. Irvin and Judy hope you will come with them and experience the Israel Holy Roman Empire tour to share one of their favorite places on earth with you. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com for more information. If your radio station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com to continue to listen to today's broadcast. Okay, put everything on the hold. Time out. Mark this date right now, February 16th. It's a week from tomorrow. I will be at the North City's Pentecostal Church, 502 Beltline in Garland, Texas. It's a suburb of Dallas. I will be speaking on what's going to happen between now and the Battle of Armageddon. I will be showing you a timeline of what is going to happen. And I won't be speculating. These are things that are crystal clear in God's Word. So you will know what's coming. I also am going to be speaking on the subject, world's greatest 
revival just ahead. Now, I'm not going to be speaking on the world's greatest trip. Turbulence is just ahead, even though it is. In the next few years, we're going to see the reign of the Antichrist. We're going to see the great tribulation. We're going to see the mark of the beast. We're going to see a one world religion. And we'll be talking about all those things. But we're also going to see the greatest revival the world has ever known. I'll be telling you how you can be involved in that revival, the role that God wants you to play, and exactly how the whole thing's going to come together. It is going to be an unprecedented evening. Now, here's the information once again. North City's United Pentecostal Church, 502 Beltline in Garland, Texas. There's no charge for being there. We will be receiving a free will offering. We'll also have all of our materials from End Time Ministries there. Plus, we're going to be launching a brand new Understanding End Time Bible Study series that you will be able to enroll in. I mean, it will educate you on what you have to know now. So it's going to be a huge night, February 16th, a week from tomorrow night, Tuesday, 7.30 p.m., 502 Beltline, Garland, Texas. Well, don't miss it, whatever you do. This is going to be an unprecedented evening. And by the way, don't forget our tour to Israel, March the 24th through April the 8th. This is going to be the tour of a lifetime. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's the truth. We're going to the Holy Land and the Holy Roman Empire. 12 days in Israel, four days in Europe. The Holy Land is where Jesus Christ will return to. The Holy Roman Empire is where the Antichrist and the false prophet will soon come from. It's going to be the power base of the Antichrist. Now, if it were that today, we wouldn't be going there. It's not that today, but it will be soon. We'll be walking you through the sites. You will understand what's coming. You'll understand the prophecies and you'll know what's going to happen before it ever gets here. It is going to be a marvelous tour. So if you'd like to go with us, call us right now. The number to call is 1-800-END-TIME. Ask to speak to someone about the tour. I'd love for you to go with Judy and myself. We'll be together with you every step of the way. We always make the greatest friends on these tours because we get to be together, uh, breakfast, dinner, supper. We spend the whole time together. We're on the buses with you. It is going to be a great time. Israel and Holy Roman Empire tour, 16 days. Now, if you can't do the whole 16 days, there is an Israel-only portion, but I hope you'll do the whole thing because, well, frankly, you won't want to miss it. Okay, the number to call, 800 in time. Uh, let's get back to our lesson day. We're talking today about the recent launch of a satellite by North Korea. When I say recent, I mean yesterday. The United Nations Security Council is meeting to condemn this act. One thing that's alarming people is that the rocket used to launch a satellite would be the same rocket that would have the ability of launching a nuclear weapon in the United States of America. And to think that Kim Jong-un, the eccentric leader of North Korea, has that kind of technology at his fingertips is sobering to say the least. That's the reason we're talking about it today. We're going to the phones now. And from Washington, Jack is calling. Hello, Jack. Hi. Hi, Urban. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Urban, uh, you've always said this. Uh, you can't figure out which one is first, either the, either the signing of the peace agreement or the the... Six Trumpets War, right? That's correct. Okay, let's go. Let's just do some logic and do some simple math here, and I think we can straighten it out real quick. Okay, help me. I will. Let's go to 913, and we know what it says. Let's go. Let's go to the fifth angel. That would be 9 1. Let's go back uh, to the fourth angel, and he sounds in t at 8 12. The third angel sounds in 8 10. Uh, the 
second angel sounds in eight eight. The uh, first angel sounds in seven and eight seven. And then it tells you in eight two. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and then were given the seven trumps. So we know they all sounded with trumps. We get that. Yes. But here's the kicker. Eight one tells you when he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. So right there it tells you that all these trumps fall under the seventh seal. We're not in the seventh seal. I and mean, well, I can prove it by going to 6-8. Go to 6-8. And I looked and beheld a pale horse. And we know in many translations that's the green horse. That's, that right there proves to you it's a pale green horse. That's Islam. And him that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. With him is the key word. This is a war between Islam. you got the Sunnis and the Shiites fighting together over what, Master? The caliph. Sure. And the power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. Count the, count the fourth part of the earth. you got it right there. you got Iraq, Iran. you got you got Syria. you got Yemen. You've got Libya. you got Egypt. Uh... Okay, Jack, let me, let me comment on what you're saying here. A lot of what you're saying I agree with, except for one key point. When you say that the seven trumpets all have to happen during the seventh seal, I don't believe that's what the scripture says. Even though the way it's written, we could be led to believe that. But let's look at it this way. There were no chapters and verses in the original Bible those have been supplied by the publishers to make it easier to locate things in Scripture. So let's just say that the first verse of chapter 8 would have been included in the seals because it was the last seal. The first verse says, And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half hour. Then we, let's pause there. The first trumpet doesn't sound until verse 7. It does That's say... Right that when the, sixth, the seventh seal was loosed, John said, And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So the seals are passed. Now he's going to look at the trumpets. But the trumpets don't start sounding until verse number seven. Now here's the point. There are seven seals and the last, the sixth and seventh seal ends at Armageddon because we have this phrase, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. That's, that phrase happens at the seventh seal. Then it starts over with the seven trumpets, and then we get to the seventh trumpet and we see the exact same phraseology. And there were voices, this is verse 19 of chapter 11. There were voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. Then you go to the seventh vial, and about verse 20 or 21, you see the same thing. When you get through the seven vials and there were voices and earthquakes and thunderings and great hail. So the sixth and seventh seal, the seventh trumpet and the seventh vial, the same thing. What does this mean to us then? This means that the seals are the long story ending in Armageddon. Then God starts over with a new narrative. And the trumpets are the shorter story ending at Armageddon. And then the vials are the real short story. The vials, all of them fall within the final three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. We know that because the first vial is poured out upon the people who have taken the mark of the beast. And that doesn't happen till during the Great Tribulation. So consequently, that's the order of Revelation. There are actually four accounts of the second coming in the book of Revelation. Chapter number six, the heavens depart like a scroll. And then uh, that's the sixth seal. And the seventh seal is their silence for half an hour. I believe the silence is when all of heaven is watching the rapture. I believe that's what they're watching at that particular time. Then, then you move into the trumpets and you get to the seventh trumpet. And it says in verse 15 of chapter 11, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. Then it starts over in chapter 12 and you have the war in heaven and that leads you all the way up to chapter 14, the two harvest in chapter 14, verse 14 through 20. Then you start all over again and you have the seven vials and that culminates 
in the second coming in chapter number 19. Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife, for the bride hath made herself ready in the marriage, the lamb has come, and then the, the, the Lord comes on a white horse to fight the battle of Armageddon. So you have Armageddon in chapter 6, you have Armageddon in chapter number 11, you have Armageddon in chapter 14, you have Armageddon in chapter 19. It's four different accounts all culminating at the revealing of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation is four different accounts of the appearance of Jesus at the time of his second coming. That's the way I believe you f we fit it all together. Well, again, I'm back to the tr all the trumps that are sounding, and you have, uh, you have the first six of those sounding right there from, from uh, chapter 9, and it takes you right back up to the seventh seal. So I, I'm in agreement that that there is no world war because if you look at six eight there that doesn't even uh, allude to a, any kind any kind of a, a world war scenario. Yeah. If we're well, in six eight, I think we're in six eight. That's where we're at. Well, that's I believe with I agree with you there because when you get to verse nine through eleven, that's the great tribulation. We're not there yet. Who's so, the beast of the field that it talks about it ends in six eight? Who's the beast of the field? Uh, the Bible doesn't say the beast of the field there. It says to kill with, with sword, with beast, and with famine. Uh, another translation says... Okay, I'm sorry. And with, with death and with the beast of the earth. The beast of the earth are all your, all your Al-Qaeda, ISIS. I agree with you. There, all of those. Another translation says the beast, your men. So I, let's, get, well, let's, let's talk about where we agree here, Jack. I agree okay. that we're living in Revelation 6, verse 8 right now. I do too. Okay. But the question is, the trumpets, have any of them sounded yet or not? I, no. believe, the, I no. believe the first five have sounded. I believe that the third trumpet was a star by the name of Wormwood, which fell to the earth and made the waters bitter. The word Wormwood is the Ukrainian word for Chernobyl. And the Chernobyl nuclear accident happened in uh, 1986 on April 26th. You know what? I've heard you. I've heard you for years, and I, I appreciate you a, a lot. And I just, you know, I've just looked at this seventh seal, and all these trumps are showing up under under the seventh seal, and none of these have happened yet because we haven't even seen the Antichrist yet. That's in verse, we're talking verse uh, 6, 9. We haven't even got there yet. Hey, Jack, got to let you go. Uh, thank you very much for your phone call. If you'd like to hear... The DVD, The Seven Trumpets, I promise you, it's your, worth your while. Call us 800 in time. Ask for the DVD, The Seven Trumpets. As a matter of fact, get the whole series. Understand the end time. It'll be worth your while. 800 in time. Study prophecy wherever you go with End Times audio downloads. Listen to one-hour lessons like Will Islam Rule the World or Seeds of Armageddon for just $4.99. Let your imagination and your understanding of prophecy dive into the End Time novels like China War in the Third Temple and Dark Intentions written by Irvin Baxter. Maybe you feel bombarded by what's going on in the news and you want to just hear some good old-fashioned preaching. We have tons of sermons taught by Irvin that are rich in truth. You can go through our entire Understanding the End Time series while driving to work, cooking dinner, or wherever your busy day takes you. Let our audio library accompany you by going to endtime.com slash store and click the audio downloads. Many people are very concerned about the direction of our country, the United States of America. Some are predicting its demise. But we at End Time Ministries are happy to announce that there is hope for the future of our nation we love so much. The United States and its special role in the future are specifically prophesied in the Bible. In our new DVD, America's God-Given Destiny, Irvin Baxter explains what the Bible says about the future of our nation and the role we are prophesied to fulfill in the end time. We have dedicated this new DVD to helping the Jewish people. As anti-Semitism is rising rapidly around the world, we want to help them get to safety in Israel. Go to endtime.com and under Irvin's thoughts, click America's God-Given Destiny. 
or call 1-800-END-TIME to find out how you can be involved in this exciting project and receive our new DVD. Let's join together and bring revival to our nation by doing what God has called us to do. Just another comment about our previous caller. If the book of Revelation were in chronological order from front to back, then I would have to agree with him. However, the book of Revelation is not in chronological order from front to back. You have an account of the second coming when the heavens depart like a scroll in chapter 6. You have another account of the second coming in chapter 11, verse 15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. You have another account of the second coming in chapter 14, verse number 17 through 20. Actually, verse number 14 through 20. And then you have another account of the second coming in Revelation chapter 19. And that's where John was told, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and the bride hath made herself ready. So we haven't had the rapture yet. The marriage of the bride to the bridegroom. The bride is the, is the church. So you have the second coming in chapter 6. You have the second coming in chapter number 11. You have the second coming in chapter 14. You have the second coming in chapter 19. So the book of Revelation is not in chronological order from front to back. If you believe that, you'll end up so confused you won't know where you're... The, here's the way it is. The seals are the long story ending at the second coming... The trumpets are the shorter story ending at the second coming. The vials are the real short story ending at the second coming. Hope that helps. And by the way, if you really want to understand end time prophecy, we have a course. It's 14 one-hour DVDs called Understanding the End Time. I've had people take that course. Their eyes light up. They say, I understood it for the first time in my life. If you've never been through the 14 lesson series, understand the end time, uh, mortgage your shoes, mortgage your coat, do whatever you've got to do, get your own copy and then go through it and go through it again and go through it again, share it with your family, share it with your friends because you're in the end time right now. And we will go stumbling along blindly if we don't have an understanding of the end time. So give us a call, 1-800-END-TIME. Ask them for the Understanding the End Time series. Let's go right back to the phones now. Mark is calling from Ohio. Hello, Mark. Hi, Pastor. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you fine. What's on your mind? Uh, I have two questions I'd like to ask you. They're not related. I'll give them to you both, and you can take them in whatever order you'd like. Um, first, I was listening to the radio last week, and I heard that the Pope was trying to normalize relations with the uh, Russian Orthodox Church. Yes. Something like that. I didn't quite hear at all. Um, and I just wanted to know if you had an update on what the Pope was up to. And uh, I know he's trying to consolidate all the religions, it seems like. I don't know that. It seems that way. And uh, I didn't know if you had an update on what the Pope was up to. And then... Uh, secondly, last night I was watching the football game and I was on Facebook and somebody that I'm a friend with posted something that it really struck a chord with me and bothered me a lot. And it was a, it was a, a saying that someone had put up there about uh, Buddhist, Jesus, Muhammad, they're all just teachers of love and it's all love is just, that's their true religion and there's no difference. And I took you know, exception to that, and it bothered me, and I said, you know, well, Muhammad actually, you know, he murdered people. <laughs> I mean, he just wasn't a, a, a love prophesier, you know, and and then this morning, I was feeling bad. I, I, like, I didn't know what's the right way to confront someone and not come off as a racist or a bigot or, you know, what would you suggest would be the right way to address somebody that would say something you know is not true? But yet, if you say it's not true, how do you not come off like you're the bad guy? You know, well, what would you say to that? Uh, God's got to help you do that. But the first thing you do is say, you know, I wish what you're telling me were true, but it's not true, because the Bible teaches us that there's only one way to salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, 
I'm the door to the sheepfold. Any man that climbs up any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Jesus, the scriptures tell us, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The only cure for sin and to redeem us from death is what Jesus Christ did when he came here and died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And you're only born again by accepting his death, his burial, his resurrection. That's the reason it's called being born again. You die, you're buried, you're raised again. That's being born again. And you only are able to do that through receiving the salvation that Jesus paid for with his own life on Calvary. So that's all I can tell you. Uh, anybody who's saying that we're all worshiped the same God and, and we all just have to, we don't know anything for sure except that we don't know anything for sure. Anyone that's saying that, it's a sign they don't have a clue about what they're talking about, even though they may be well-meaning. And the only way you get a person is to let them know the scriptures say that Jesus Christ is the only door to the sheepfold and that it's only through the plan of salvation he purchased at Calvary through his death that a person can be saved. That's all I know that you can tell them. Now, as far as the relationship that the Pope is trying to establish between the Roman Catholic Church and all other religions, he is, in, in fact, trying to bring all the religions of the world together. Uh, he recently visited a synagogue. He's now met for the first time in a thousand years with the head of the Orthodox Church. Uh, he's reaching out to Protestants. Many Protestants plan to go to Rome next year at the 500th anniversary of the uh, Reformation beginning to, to signal the end of the Reformation. Uh, so there's much afoot right now. And the Bible specifically says that the Pope will lead the one world religion during the time of the Antichrist. So we shouldn't be surprised that this is happening right now. True. All right. Well, thank you for your time, brother. Uh, thank you, Mark. And uh, let me tell you, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And a lot of people, the scriptural illiteracy today is so alarming. That's the reason we did a course called Understanding the Bible. It's 18 DVDs. And it takes a person through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in a way that the average person can really understand we start out with, why did God create human beings? A lot of people live and die and never know why they were here. But God had a plan. And once you know what God's plan is, then you can know how you fit into that plan. Then when Adam and Eve were created, they were created sons of God. But they lost their status through disobedience. You don't see another human son of God for the next 4,000 years until the second Adam. Jesus Christ. And he came through his obedience. He undid all the damage done by the first Adam's disobedience. And then he created a plan whereby all of us can be restored to sonship. His plan is called being born again. Until a person is born again, they're not a son of God. Well, when you're born again, you once again, you're redeemed, you're brought back to the original status that God intended for the human race. These are some of the concepts we teach in understanding the Bible. I highly, highly recommend it to you. Uh, it will just be such a blessing to you. You will understand the Bible. If you've, if you've tried to read the Bible and you haven't been able to understand it, well, get the Understanding the Bible course. It's a, uh, 18 hours, and there's a quiz after each lesson that you can take to check yourself, and that number to call if you'd like to have that is 1-800-END-TIME. Real quickly before we run out of time, let's go to Marcy calling from Indiana. Hello, Marcy. Hi, uh, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Marcy. Yeah, I'm calling because I think it's like I heard the words follow me one night, and it was, it was a few nights ago, and I don't know if it's because I have a short time to live or I might be a fatality in the war, but, for some, but why would God say follow me? Well, I think he's probably talking about himself. In that you like should, he wants, it's like he wanted me to follow him. Yeah, that's, that would be right. Uh, Jesus, that was his message to everyone he taught. He said, take up your cross, follow me. So Does how he do you tell everybody to do that or just those who might have a short time to live? No, he's telling all of us to do that because we all have a short time to live. 
Uh, oh. All of our times are limited right now. And how do we follow Jesus? Here's the big question. We follow him. The Bible says, he that heareth my words and doeth them shall live forever. Jesus' words are the key to eternal life. And consequently, that's what God's asking you to do, Marcy. That's what God's asking me to do. We follow him by reading his word and by seeking his face with a daily prayer life, read his Bible, his word every day, and walk in his footsteps, do what he says do. That's the key to eternal life. So hope that helps. Hey, Marcy, okay. we're going to let you go. Just about out of time here. Thank you very much for your phone call today. Uh, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, we started out the program today with this news that Korea launched a satellite yesterday. But more important than the satellite was the rocket it took to launch it. Because according to the news reports, the rocket that it took to launch that satellite could just as easily carry a nuclear warhead to the United States of America. And to think that we're now within the reach of North Korea with its very unusual leader, Kim Jong-un, and that he has the power to unleash nuclear terror on the United States of America. He claims to have a hydrogen bomb. I don't know whether he does or does not. Now that's an important point because the nuclear weaponry that we used against Nagasaki and Hiroshima in World War II, well, we killed about 140,000 people with the attack on Hiroshima. But a hydrogen bomb is a 1,000 times as powerful as that. If, in fact, Kim Jong-un has a hydrogen bomb like he claims, that means that he can unleash terror that would be a thousand times as much as what was unleashed against Nagasaki. Now there's a war coming that's gonna kill one third of mankind. I wish the United States were not going to be in it, but I'm afraid we will be. It takes a lot of nuclear weaponry to kill 2.4 billion people. The only sure place of safety is in Jesus Christ. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. So what I'm saying to all of you out there, and this message is so strong in my heart today, make sure you're biblically born again. I've written a brochure, what do you mean born again? It's free. If you don't have the internet to get to it, uh, pick up the phone and call us, 1-800-END-TIME, we'll send it out to you free of charge. Uh, if you do have the internet, go to endtime.com, E-N-D-T-I-M-E.com and halfway down on the page, you'll see it. What do you mean born again? Click on it, read it. If there's something there you don't understand, pick up the phone, call us, ask to speak to one of our ministers. 800 in times the number to call. God bless you all. We'll be right back here this time tomorrow. Until then, God be with you. is a production of End Time Ministries. This broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.